Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I would like to welcome you all in this virtual class. We are having uh, virtual classes uh, since the lockdown started. And I think this is the 10th class. And today we are going to deal uh, with the Marxist approach to critical discourse analysis. And Marx and Marxism, you might have heard the terminology many times. However, uh, uh, so however, we have not practiced a lot to apply the approach in critical discourse analysis. Uh, so let me let me start now. Is there you know uh, everything okay? Abhyog sir, can you mute your microphone, please? Can you can you can you mute? Yes, please? I'm I'm. Okay, you mute please. Uh, everybody, you mute your uh, microphone, and uh, let me. Uh, yes, let me check once how many you are here. Shivani, Bandana, uh, Abhyog sir, Parmila, Santosh. So fine. Everybody is here. Let me let me go. Uh, Marx, German philosopher, economist, sociologist, historian, and revolutionary socialist. Uh, you 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 know you might have heard uh, uh, many times about Marx, Karl Marx. So uh, renounced for uh, renounced for his communist manifesto. It's one of his, you know, uh, very famous uh, contribution to the society that was published in 1848. And another one is Das Kapital, which was published in 1894. Uh, I am I'm receiving some back, background noise. Can you please uh, mute your microphone, all of you? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let me let me mute all if you are not okay. Uh, and then we we'll still of you sir has something some problem. Anyway, okay. Uh, I hope you can listen me all. So uh, Marx theories about society, economics, and politics are collectively known as Marxism. And Marxist concepts took you know, power in, the, in a variety of countries in the 20th century. Everybody, can we check you know, uh, your microphone? Are you okay? Are you are you getting clear sound there? I have, you know, I've been uh, getting some, you know, background noise. Yeah, it is of uh, Abhyok sir. Anyway, that's fine. Abhyok sir, please keep, uh, is, you know, keep muting your microphone, eh? Do not... Uh, muting, sir. Okay, fine. It's okay now. Good. You mute it. So, uh, yes, I'm talking about, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, Marxist approach to CDA. That's why I'm trying to give you some preliminary concept over here. And uh, yes, are you all with me? Are you listening? Yes, sir. We are listening to you. Yes, okay. Yes, okay. Okay. So, so let's continue. Let's continue now. So Marxist concept took power in a variety of countries in the 20th century, the concept of power and critical linguistics and uh, uh, critical discourse analysis have been shaped by Marxism in the late 20th century. So these two terminology you have to remember, critical linguistics and then critical discourse analysis, both shaped by Marxism. And Marx gave us a theory of society that is an explanation of how society works how society functions or of how and why history has unfolded and especially an you know, account of the nature of the capitalism. How capitalism or capitalist, they function in our society, okay? That has been discussed there. 
and let me go ahead the marxist cd particularly we concern over here uh, in in our field critical discourse analysis marxist also known as the you know uh, known as the critic of global capitalism it is also known as a uh, critic of global capitalism and it is the reference made on marxist ideology of class conflict and revolution by perclock and graham so these two people they have you know made marxist ideology of class conflict and revolution uh, uh, popular in cda so these two people they brought the concept of marx in critical discourse analysis okay so this concept particularly the concept of ideology the concept of you know class class you know i i have been talking a lot of time you know um, the classes in the society and then revolution so brought by marxist so that concept was introduced by perclock and graham in cda and marxist ideology states that organizational structures are not uh, rational systems for performing work in the most efficient manner rather they are power system designed to maximize control and profit okay so uh, if you do not understand just you note there we can discuss later it is the critique on how social economic system are built upon the domination exploitation and dehumanization by the bourgeois or let's say bourgeoisie uh, over the you know proletarians bourgeois and proletarians this 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 is you know class bourgeois and proletarian means proletarian means you know the people elite people those people who uh, are the you know owner of the property and bourgeois are the people who belong to the working class labor class okay and marx precisely gave emphasis on the dialectical interconnectivity of language and other elements of social process so uh, there should be the you know interconnectivity dialogues interaction you know between or uh, among the you know language and social components that means social component means social institution or social power you know ideology there can be number of elements in society they have to have the communication time and again okay and his approach was profoundly transdisciplinary marx approach as his study drew on studies in political theory political economy juris you know uh, prudence and philosophy social theory anthropology histo you know historiography so look at so this approach concept of you know marx can be related to other areas as well so two other areas that means uh, okay uh this is transdisciplinary you can just understand transdisciplinary okay so um, yes his approach was profoundly transdisciplinary remember that point and he emphasized that the development of critical understanding of a language is central to understanding social organization and social change so marx is concerned with showing the historical relationship remember here historical relationship between abstract and concrete aspect of human experience through the development of dialectical argument you know interaction argument means interaction so uh this is what we we need to understand and again marx investigated the common meanings the accepted assumptions definitions and understandings with the aim of revealing and opposing hidden ideologies the ideology that cannot be seen um, in the surface though it may be hidden that may be you know represented in the action in the you know activities uh, of the you know society so that has to be studied there so marx uh, suggest us to study that hidden uh, ideology in the society through the discourse okay and he's in you know marx investigated the common meanings like this way the accepted assumptions definition 
and understanding with the aim of revealing, showing, and opposing hidden ideology. So CDA has been influenced by Marxism, and like Marxism, it aims to challenge social dogma. Okay, do you remember social dogma? Uh, do you do you understand what does you know social dogma means? Social dogma means the concept of really? the society that is also related with the ideology that may be you know deeply rooted in the society. So uh, which is not you know easily uprooted. It needs effort, power that should be conflict. Then only it can be uprooted. So some bad you know concept, bad activities, bad tradition can be over there uh, endowed or rooted in the society. And that is what we call social dogma of received wisdom as well. Okay, so basic assumptions or characteristics of Marxist approach. Let's see. The basic assumption. What are the basic assumptions or characteristics? You can just, you know, uh, let's say, you know, sketch or you can just, you know, uh, keep in mind. So class, class conflict. We already talked, you know, bourgeois or bourgeoisie and then, then uh, proletariat and then ideology uh, and conflict, economic service structure, profit and exploitation. Uh, you know, the five percent people will be exploiting other, you know, labor class people. So alienation and then, you know, power, politics, deconstruction of community. Community can be deconstructed and revolution and transformation are at the heart of Marxist criticism. Okay. These are the terminologies that you, you can remember while talking about the Marxist approach. And economic situation is the most important determinant or let's say very important determinant of all other aspects of society, including discourse, institution, law, morality, and education. So among them, economics is highlighted by the Marx. Okay, economic. Because, you know, uh, the control of economy will be in the hand of uh, capitalist. He says that. Okay, so there are other factors as well other determinants of society or social life, like, you know, there is the uh, discourse, there is the institution, like a school, college, you know, company, factory, so many others, like laws, bylaws, constitution, the, these are also the, you know, essential component or determinant, however, morality, education, but out of this all, economics is the main, he focuses on economics, okay? So we need to here as a discourse analyst, we, we need to connect that, you know, concept to the discourse, a discourse analysis over here. Okay. So a discourse is basically about the struggle between the cases of dominance, how dominance is represented in the discourse. We, we need to analyze it and then we need to find out. So look at the discourse is influenced by the mode of production you know, production and reproduction, these terminologies come time and again in Marxist approach. Production and reproduction. Production means, you know, uh, is related with the economics of the society. Produce production. So even in, you know, in, 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 in our, not only in our country, in many other countries, you can see the control of production level is in the hand of capitalist. Okay, very few, you know, proletariat, uh, let's say proletariats, they control that, you know, production level. And the labor people, they cannot, you know, have the access on that capital. And then what happens? There takes place the conflict between the, you know, proletariat and then, then, then the bourgeois, or let's say then working class and then um, the owner in the factory. Do, uh, let me ask one question. Have you, um, have you read, you know, Ama, Mother, Maxim Gorkic? Yes, Anybody, have you read this book? Yes. Okay, you can read this book. So you can find there, you know, the conflict, how it develops you know, in the factory and how the yeah. workers, the labor, they protest. The resist the you know power domination in the company. 
Look at. So that is influenced by the you know, mode of production. So major social change is not possible without revolution. Okay. If there is no revolution, you cannot feel the changes in the society, in the factory. Okay. If you go on continuously following the dogmas, following the rules of the society as it is, then you never feel any changes in a society. So Marx says, okay, Marx says this one. So you need to do the revolution. There can be the revolution, there can be the social change, and that you know, social change um, can be represented in the discourse, contemporary discourse, okay? And while analyzing this discourse, we try to connect that you know, discrimination, that conflict, that you know, uh, revolution, in the society, okay. So discourse is also one of the product of society, okay. So uh, through the discourse, we try to see the you know power relationship, domination. Who is dominant, okay? Which group is dominant? Whose voice is heard? So this kind of thing we we we, we analyze in discourse. And discriminatory, oppressing discourse is the form of capitalism, okay. So capitalism, because of this capitalism system, still it is you know, alive in the world. Since it has you know, some advantages, it is still alive. Capitalism. It, you know, anyhow, you collect the property. You, you know, capitalists, they do not care about the labor, labor people, working people. Right? So, they, 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 they do not care about the you know, domination also because these people, they think that we are getting some money. We are sustaining our life. And they say so and then they do not care much. How much they are giving to the country, how much they are giving to their owner, okay? Their sow, they do not care. This is how they are exploited. Okay? And this is the product of capitalism, oppressing, discriminatory. So language is both implicated and exploited, you know, exploited, you know, as the decisive element. So language comes over there. It is an element of social life. So that comes in the process of, you know, exploitation by the capitalism. So abstraction, dialects, and ideology are the three conceptual elements of discourse. Look at the abstraction means which can be hidden which can be implicit, which we cannot see from our outer, you know, um, uh, sight. So, and then that can be hidden. And dialects always, you know, with the help of language, there can be, you know, the interaction, discourse, dialects, two-way communication and ideology. But at the same time, there will be the, you know, strong ideology of the um, dominant group. So these three things are the conceptual elements of discourse. And dominant classes will not voluntarily give up power. Nobody wants to lose the power. Nobody wants to lose their you know, position, right? So this is the, you know, uh, okay, uh, voluntarily, they never, they never want to give the power if they are in power. They, they don't want to lose their privilege. So they have you know, domination over the people's discourses. They don't want to listen to other, other people's voice. They don't want to, you know, give other people space to come up. Why? Because they don't want to leave their place. They use force. They use power. And because of that, there takes place kind of domination. Okay? So, Shivani, raise the hand. Do you have any question? Okay, sir. Yes, please. Uh, for the example of extraction, can, uh, uh, can it be possible that it's like in uh, some of the cases in the court, uh, some people uh, try to hide the truth thing, uh, coming out or disclosing the truth thing. They give some kind of money and they hide the truth thing from, uh, or let us say they buy the witnesses. That means it's not, it can be example of abstraction. Of course. Of course. Abstraction means, you know, everything cannot be revealed in the discourse, but we can only, you know, guess. We, we can only anticipate. For example, if I ask you, does your boss dominate you in your um, uh, school? If I ask you a question, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. You say the, in discourse, we do not find the you know such types of thing directly. That can be implicit. 
they are in discourse so this implicit you know um, uh, things should be analyzed or there should be you know that the, there is always abstraction hidden thing that has to be made clear by the discourse analyst okay that's the point okay sir nobody says na so even if you are in you know, a very trouble how are you shivani if i ask oh sir i am fine it's okay you you keep on saying okay okay huh? but nobody understand what is okay so through the help of your tone tone how you are saying your use of words terminology i need to i need to i need to you know guess how much uh, happiness you have <coughs> right okay so, right sir uh, uh, abhyaksha is you know calling i don't know so let's go let's go to the next okay using marxist criticism <coughs> in discourse marxism was criticized heavily yesterday i told you uh, no no yesterday the day before yesterday i gave you some example of you know uh, critical theory how critical theory started who were the you know the initiator of critical theory like i told you um, frankfurt school right the frankfurt school is the criticism marx was criticized we should not talk only the you know like what uh, domination power economic class only where is the culture of the people where is the you know life human life where is their you know personal agency where is their you know um, let's say uh, emotion feelings individual choices Th these things have to be you know addressed critical theorists they said and uh, while you know coming critical theorist uh, at the front line marx marxist approach or marxism was criticized a lot okay so according to marxist discourse reflects those social institution out of which it emerges and is itself a social institution with a particular ideological function the marxist critic simply is a careful reader or viewer who keeps in mind the issues of power and money and any you know of the following okay any of any of the following look at following question you have to keep in mind these questions so and then only you can you know use the marxist so for example how does discourse differ from class to class there is a the class in society how discourse differs the communication the discourse produced by rana family and the discourse you know produced by mushawar family in the, you know tarai do you think there is a difference of course you need to see like this way how does discourse dominate the people and how it is imposed upon the you know haves not there are two class you know one is haves another one is haves not or let's say have and have nots we say huda khane and huda khane ra hune khane we say in nepali yes. huh? so these yes. two yeah how does discourse dominate the people of uh, people and how it is imposed upon the uh, uh, haves nots how do the oppressed overcome oppression how do they struggle there what does the cda works say about oppression or are social conflicts ignored or blamed elsewhere hai kale kai chini tamai ko to have have not ko to kurai sunidaina tira ko voice ta tani ekdam lower gariyeko huncha so how do you how do you you know identify that how cda you know address them we need to address we need to always take side of the oppressed one marginalized one okay have have nots not have have nots okay have nots group so does the work propose some form of utopian vision as a solution to the problems encountered in the work so this question should be kept in mind so let's go to the conclusion marxist cda views that there is a difference between haves and have nots socio economic classes in the society that means socio economic classes okay and our societies are full of biasness society biasness of course there is no just society just means equal society there is no ram rajya in our society 
right? So our societies are full of biasness, domination there is. Just like better will learn. So and injustice still. And there is a great suppression from the aristocrats. You know aristocrats, aristocratic. So an ideology is a belief system that can be found there in discourse also. It maintains the power in society. Ideology. Which ideology what? Who thinks what? Who takes favor of what? So these are the things, okay? And there is the expositions of power in the discourse. In the discourse, you can feel, you can see the you know, exercise of power. Who spoke most? And what impact you know, can you realize by that speech? So this power relation, power exposition can be realized in discourse, can be felt in discourse. So while analyzing that, you need to analyze, okay? Economic class, economics, class, power, when it comes, then you can directly use uh, this approach. It is a means to support the suppression over the proletariats. Proletariats, okay? And then discourse shows different classes, their identity, their pain, their ideology, the exercise of you know power and so on. In discourse, if you are real discourse analyzed, you can see these things there. When you get one text, when you read one line, when you see one advertisement, when you you know uh, find the conversation, you will find directly. Oh, what is there? Who is dominant? What types of you know voice is raised? Whether it's uh, class is and high or low, so everything you can find if you are good critical analyzed. So the aim of Marxist CDA is to establish socialism. Okay, socialism. I have told you in the class also, not capitalism. Socialism, providing the justice, emancipatory, helping people who are in the you know oppressed group, whose voice is not heard, giving the voice to the voiceless, raising the voice of these people. So, and communi communism throughout the world via uh, critical analysis. Analyzing critically, they want to raise the voice, they, they want to, you know, aware the people. So this is the thing. Thus, while making the critical discourse analysis from Marxist lens, we need to see how all these factors above are related and expressed in any form of discourse. So this is all. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any question, uh, uh, yes, we have three, four minutes time. Uh, uh, we can sir, talk now. Sir, 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 please, previous slides. Previous slides. Which one? Uh, according to Marxist. Is, is this? No, no, not this one, sir. Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, so this one, yes. So the, this one, sir, please. Uh, wait, stop, just a minute. Go on, sir. Yeah, this one. So please uh, listen this one. According to Marxist, this course reflects those social institutions out of which it emerges and is itself a social institution with a particular ideological function. So this line, uh, so will you explain this line again? Of course, of course. No problem. No problem. I will, I will try my best. Okay. So uh, what Marxist say? Marxist approach says that discourse reflects those social institutions, okay? Social institution. In society, there are many institutions, like one factory is one institution. Your school is one institution, right? So if, if Shivani and Vijaya is talking somewhere else, if you talk there, this talk is discourse. In this talk, we can sense a kind of, you know, domination. We, we, we can sense there some, you know, something of your institution, right? So, so what is the, the discourse reflects those social institution out of which it emerges, it comes. The discourse is born, the discourse is emerged from that social institution where there is the, you know, domination and is itself a social institution. And that becomes, you know, social institution itself. Okay, social institution means the discourse itself becomes sometimes social institution with the particular ideological function. If you are talking each other, 
if you you know find the text in media that can be one institution itself but this uh, media discourse can be talking about another again another uh, social institution so the discourse is the product of social institution that's why discourse reflects what happens there there can that means uh, there, 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 there is, you can find there some ideology right Okay, that's what that means. These discourse are produced in social institutions. Of course. And uh, sometimes this social is uh, this uh, social uh, discourse itself become a social institution, which yes. is followed by some kind of ideology of the person. Sure, the sure, 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 sure. Yes, you, 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 you understand now. Good, good idea. So, so while analyzing the discourse, you need to connect like this way, okay, to the institution. What is happening there? How uh, discourse can reflect the domination power play class suppression oppression okay in, in that particular social institutions you need to see these things okay so uh, we are almost coming at the end uh, how many we are today i don't know actually uh, uh, we are altogether how many uh, five six we are six people here uh, i think abhyog sir also uh, listening to us I'm active, sir. I'm active. Yes. Are you? Sure. Lord? Okay. Okay. One minute, Santosh. So, uh, do you have anything? Last minute. Last thought. Sir. Sir. Max. Uh, Max's approach always studies the discourse, mm -hmm. keeping the capital and power in the central point. No, sir. Yes, of course. Economics. Capital means economics. Yeah. Economics. Economics and power. No, sir. Power. Yeah. Power means class. Also, you need to understand other terminology, ideology. Okay. So yes. these things. Yes, sure, Santosh. So, thank you all of you for uh, attending the class, listening to me. Uh, this is the end of the session today. And uh, tomorrow, you can just come uh, with the reading. Uh, maybe we are, we will be dealing this colonial and post-colonial approach. Okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, and thank you for Have a nice all day. of my friends. Uh, have a nice day. Goodbye. And Try to invite uh, as many friends.